The Stoics were teaching us these lessons around 2000 years ago, and most of them remain relevant today. But these principles, these three illusions are actually more important to today's society on a huge scale. The Stoics could have never predicted how much we needed this wisdom. Uh, with the rise of social media, the rise of lies and politicians that lie and people that lie, we're living in a world of lies. And the Stoics taught of these three illusions. And if we can break down these illusions, then we can see the truth. We can see reality. And the ancient Stoics placed a huge importance, a great importance on reality, on seeing the truth. They thought it was one of the keys to living the good life. And I can understand why. Once I started following these principles and understanding these illusions and started seeing the truth, life became a lot easier, a lot more freeing. I became happier, more confident. I became a better person and the world around me became a better place. So this is the three illusions as taught by the ancient Stoics. I am William Mulligan, author of The Everyday Stoic, Simple Rules for a Good Life. I teach practical stoicism to help you improve your life, improve your character, and become the best version of yourself. So if you're new here, welcome to the journey. And if you're old, welcome back. Today's episode is powered by Huel. Let's jump into the episode. The beauty of the ordinary is lost in the dreams of the fictitious extraordinary. What we have right now, this reality, the truth of life, this is the extraordinary. But our imaginations build dreams and fictitious realities that seem so incredible, so mind-blowing, so unreal, that they can actually ruin the present moment we have because what we have right now will never compare to these ideas. But they're just ideas. So the first illusion is the time illusion. It's something I talk about all the time and I think it's one of the most important things. The time illusion is most of us live in the future. We create this beautiful future in which life exists, or even a horrible future in which life exists. And many of us live in the past, in our mistakes, the regrets, and this can ruin our present moment. You see, the only thing that exists is this present moment. So living in the past does no good. Living in the future doesn't help. And a bright future might sound good. Living in the dreams of a bright future might sound amazing, but it's almost as damaging as living in a horrible future, imagining a horrible future, being anxious about a horrible future, because many people put off this present moment. They put off the work of this present moment. They put off living in the reality of the present moment, enjoying the world around them, enjoying the company around them, the friends, the family, the world they have that's going on around them. And you put this off for dreams of a better future. So you imagine when I finally get that job, when I finally get married, when I finally graduate, when I finally get a nuke on Call of Duty, when I finally complete this game, when I finally get a pay rise, when I finally find the secrets to life. And you put off the reality that we have, the only thing that we ever have in hopes of a brighter future. So as damaging as it is to live in a bad future where we worry about the future because that makes present anxiety, present depression, present worry, it's almost as damaging living in a bright future because you put off this present moment. And yes, it's good to have goals for the future, things and aims to work towards, but the present moment is all we have. And the present moment is enough. In fact, it's amazing. Like I said, we ruin the beauty of the present. We ruin the beauty of the ordinary in dreams of the fictitious extraordinary. This is the extraordinary. Think about it, it's 400 trillion to one that we're even here. That's pretty extraordinary. The world is extraordinary. The 
advancements, the billions of people going around us, the craziness, the beauty, the randomness, the excitement, everything. It's extraordinary. And it's here right now. So the second illusion. I want you to think about a film like Stand By Me. You know, a film of friendship, a film of real friendship, true friendship. This is what friendship looks like. Um, it's beautiful. You know, you have the, the soundtrack, you have the friends, you have the cinematography, you have a beautifully crafted story. It's amazing. You, you leave that film feeling good. You're like, well, that's good, good film, good friendship film. But that's not friendship. That's just a film. And this is the thing about this illusion of definition is we create definitions in our head. So our definition of happiness can be constructed when we're children. Oftentimes, most of these things are constructed when we're children, but some are constructed by modern media. So when we're children, we get taught that happiness is this feeling we get when we're running around on a bouncy castle, screaming, eating cake, drinking pop, we're with all our friends, the sun is bright and we feel ecstatic, we feel vibrant, we feel elated, we feel incredible, we feel like we're full of adrenaline and we could eat life. So we assume this is happiness and we get older and older. And then when we don't feel this feeling, this definition of happiness, then we believe we're not happy. And it is definitions that can destroy us. And this destroys the beauty of the present moment with these made up definitions. So when I'm talking about this film, Stand By Me, we believe, and I've been there when I, I've, I've watched films, like you watch the whole Harry Potter saga, or you read the whole Harry Potter um, saga, and you're like, that's true living, that's true adventure, that's true life, challenges and all this. And then you're left with your sad little life and you're like, but I don't have that. I don't have the friendship they have in Stand By Me. But you do. This is a thing constructed by the greatest artists in the world. You've got the, the sound team, the design team, the writers, the cinematographers, director, producer, actors, amazing actors, and they're producing the story that's not real. It's a fairy tale. Then we compare ourselves. We try to live our definition of friendship and happiness or our definition of love in comparison to an, an amazing song. And this song, we can never even compare our love to this song. Because these things are drawn out. Friendship's drawn out. It's a long ordeal. Love is a long ordeal. It's ups and downs, highs and lows. And that's life. But this film just encapsulates a beauty. So that is definition. If you keep living against these medias and these ideas that you have in your head, these constructs that are fake, then you will never feel the reality the realness of the things you have. Because I would argue, well, it's true. It's not even an argument, it's true. That the love you have, the friendship you have, the life you have is vastly more beautiful than these medias. Vastly more beautiful because it's real. It's raw, it's real. There's hurt, there's love, there's pain, there's sacrifice, there's beauty, there's everything. It's so vast and complex and incredible and it's real. That's the beauty of it. It's real. Remember, we're getting down to what is real. The present moment is real. Your life is real. The feelings you have are real. Not, not these medias, not these definitions. A quick word from our sponsor, Huel. I really like Huel. When I was writing my book, I was using Huel to power me through every single day. When I had my daily greens, when I had my meals, when I had my shakes, it stopped me from going to the shop, buying a load of rubbish, buying a load of unhealthy food, wasting loads of money. And these things do add up. Those quick journeys to the shop every day, the money adds up, the unhealthy foods add up, the wasted time adds up. So if I ever get those cravings, I grab a Huel and it fills my cravings. I feel good. It tastes delicious. It's quick and easy. And if you have any interest in the Huel products, then check the link in the description. Let's get back to the episode. The third illusion is the illusion of comparison, which is the most important in today's society. And maybe the, the Stoics were like predicting, I don't think they're dead, but predicting the rise of Instagram and TikTok and social, all this social media. Comparison, uh, like they say, you know, 
comparison is the thief of joy. And I truly believe this, you know, I, I, had, a, I had a friend and it, it used to be this guy that was like so outgoing. Like I've never met anyone like him. He's the most outgoing person I've ever met. You know, he, he would go on these great adventures, just go out there um, on three in the morning, hike up a mountain, meet some old couple, end up having dinner at the house, having coffee in their cottage, then going on some great adventure, probably ending up at their wedding, you know, th this kind of guy. And, you know, he started to change. And I, I, I tried to talk to him every day and he started to change and he started to lose that zest for life, started to lose that excitement. He started to lose this outgoing nature he had and he became just like an ordinary person. Um, and he explained to me and he fixed this. He fixed this in one day, but th this affected him for a few years. But he fixed it in one day. It's a great secret I'm going to reveal to you. Um, and I've done it as well before. So he lost this zest for life that he had. He said the reason he started getting down is because he started comparing. He started comparing his life to people on social media, friends on social media. So he would be going out hiking, doing all these crazy things, but he wasn't posting it to social media, getting loads of likes. Then he would see friends that would go to a club, go to some party, and they would get thousands of likes. They've got their new Louis Vuitton bag, hat, jacket, whatever Louis Vuitton make, got their new Balenciaga, their new Gucci, or their new car. And he didn't have any of these things. He just had this awesome life and his happiness. But he traded this awesome life this happiness, his unique self, his authenticity, one of the only gifts we're ever given in life, our authenticity, one of the greatest gifts we're given in life, our authenticity. And he traded this to fit in because he was comparing himself to these people on social media and he equated their success on social media, the comments, the adoration that it was getting from people that were probably in the same situation. He equated this to a good life. So he traded his happiness and his authenticity for this thing. So he started going out partying more, started buying nice clothes, you know, these kind of things. And lo and behold, he lost his happiness. He lost his joy. He lost his outgoing nature. He lost all of it. And how did he get it back? He deleted social media. And within a week, it all came rushing back. He was doing the things he wanted to do. He was doing the things he enjoyed. So that is the three illusions, the illusion of time. This present moment is the only thing we have. The illusion of definition. The Stoics were quite big on this, actually, about defining things, seeing things for how they really are. You know, Marcus Aurelius, the great emperor of Rome, he would talk about this expensive wine, you know, or, or the, you know, because he was, he was super rich. Or all, all these great people with these powerful politicians were around him drinking this expensive wine, saying, how great are we wearing their purple robes? He said, don't be careful not to be dyed in purple, first of all, uh, not to be Caesarified, because he was Caesar. Um, he's saying, don't, don't let all this stuff go to your head. Don't be distracted by the stuff. Don't let it cloud your judgment. But the thing about the wine, you know, it was super expensive, super amazing. All these people will be sipping it, showing off, oh, we're so much better than the paupers, um, the plebs, the lowers. He said, this is just fermented grapes. That's all it is. Just cut it out, it's just fermented grapes. And he did this with many things in life. But the idea is, you just see things for how they really are. It's not all glitz and glamour. You know, this person posting their happy life to social media, they get thousands of followers. What's the reality? If you really think, you know, this this pretty picture where they look good, it's got good lighting, they've got a good smile, they've got a good outfit, the good props, everything's perfect, the, the good caption. Think about what actually went on there. They had to, they had to settle, and some people enjoy this. I'm not, I'm not bashing people who enjoy this because there's certain things I like posting on social media. But what, what I'm saying is you've probably been there and you've got the happy picture. You spent ages trying to get the lighting right, ages trying to get your face right. Um, you know, you, you went through all of them. You judged yourself for ages, hundreds of photos. Don't like that one, don't like that one. Oh, my face looks weird in that one. My eyes look weird in that one. My nose looks weird in that one. What's wrong with the posture? What's wrong with the lighting? You pick out your favorite one, you post it, then you feel awkward about it, you feel anxious about it, and you're like, oh, what if people don't like it? And the likes are never enough because you get 10 this time, you want 20 next time, you want a thousand next time. So the reality is they probably took that picture and it didn't bring them much. And, you know, they, most people, I'm not saying all people, but most people lose their authenticity. They lose the gift at the present moment. They lose the gift of reality. 
Um, they lose the gift of being authentic by trying to show off, trying to appear cool. You know, people are trying to appear happy, appear cool, appear successful. When in reality, we want to be happy. We want to be successful. And I think that's pretty cool. So that is the three illusions from the Stoics. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a wonderful day.